A couple of your squad members, uh, Nick Darcy, do you think a medal will earn him redemption with the Australian public? I think for some people it will, um, but I think for some people it won't. Um, like, you know, all he can do is just swim and swim fast. He's very focused on, uh, you know, trying to get the best out of himself here. He's had a lot of that distractive stuff. Um, you know, it's been in the past, I suppose, but it keeps getting brought up. And uh, I think he's got pretty narrow focus. He's able to to kind of uh, filter that off to one side and, and just focus on the job at hand for him. And, you know, the job at hand for him is getting himself through the heats getting himself through the semis and then hopefully getting himself through the final. And once he's in the final, it's anyone's race. What advice have you given him in recent weeks just to, to keep him focused? I mean, he's pretty, obviously pretty mentally tough to be able to endure what he's gone through. <laughs> to be honest, I've got to go the other way with him. I've got to pull him back a little bit. Like, I think he tends to uh, want to be ready to race at the Olympics every single day for the last four, mm. sort of four weeks coming in. And I think, you know, you've got to try and keep a lid on things and you've got to try and come to a, a, a peak. That's what you try and do as a coach. You try and get your kids swimming fast at the right time. Like there are many people who do times at meets four, five, six, seven, eight weeks before the Olympics that could have won medals but don't do it at the Olympics. So it's it's just about trying to get them right to perform well on the day. So with Nick, you've got to kind of pull him back when you see him, you know, getting two G'd up before the session. You've got to pull him to the side and you know just tell him to settle down a little bit and keep relaxed. Still got another ten days, twelve days to the race and. Uh, um, you know, just try and take things a little bit slower. I think one of the good feel-good stories of these games will be Megan Nay, what she's been through and what she's endured. Um, again, from a coaching perspective, you must be very proud of what she's had to cope with in her own life with personal tragedy. Yeah, like I think, you know, she was probably the best prepared ever coming into the World Championships in 2009 and unfortunately her brother died the day before the uh, World started and that just sort of shattered her uh, World Championship dream and uh, she fought her way back. Um, came back at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi the next year and, and I won the Commonwealth goal there. Didn't perform that well last year at the World Championships. Did reasonably well, maybe sixth or fifth. But she's prepared very well. She's a little bit lighter than she's, she, she's ever been before and she's doing things in training that, you know, sort of indicate she's ready to, uh, you know, put some good performances here through it uh, in uh, London next week. A tough journey, in the, losing your brother and also your dad. It is tough and you know she's had to go through a lot and uh, you know it's uh, you know been good she's had a good support group around her like the other kids in the squad have been fantastic and uh, you know the assistant coaches we've got on staff have been very good everyone's very very supportive of Megan they're very aware of what she's gone through and I think that's helped her a lot as well. One final one how will we go overall as a team in London? I think we'll go well we've got a great mix of um, you know younger and older I think the star performers and the men obviously uh, you know the two James and the in the in the 100 freestyle are looking fantastic at the moment our relay teams look very strong on all three relays and we've got a lot of young boys <coughs> who I think in the next sort of 12 months to 24 months are really going to step up and do a great job the girls team look very very strong there's a number of good candidates there for medals and you know you never know what happens with medals at meets I was just saying to someone before you know we had Duncan Armstrong talk to our swimmers before we came away and he said before 80 88 he was ranked 42nd or something in the world coming in so you know you don't have to be in the top three or four coming in to, to sort of win a medal and do well. It's, it's um, you know, anyone's game. If you can keep progressing yourself through from those heats to the semis through the finals, anyone can do anything. So I think we've got a great bunch of kids. Uh, everyone's really pulled together well as a group since, we, since we've been in Manchester. Obviously, we're swimming. We're a little bit fractured after trials, going off doing our, doing our own thing in our own programs. But coming into Manchester here, I think, has been fantastic uh, for the group to pull together as a team. Bowley, we wish you all the best. Thanks very much, Jim.